are fake news. You are fake news. is up everybody what is up let's get this volume up you guys like the fit I you guys like the the drip hopefully i'm coming in loud and clear uh somebody give me a thumbs up you know how this tech goes especially tonight but that's okay we got it figured out i think if i'm loud and clear if the video's good send me one of these let's rock and roll it's good to see you all tonight and i hope i'm not talking to myself looks like the volume's good looks like the video's good looks like everything looks and sounds good for all that i can see actually look like a blind person like that that was my impression so uh send me a thumbs up if you guys like the way it looks like the way it sounds and if you're ready for tonight episode 88 of artistic freedom that's right i had some technical difficulties and we fixed them no town vandal thanks for the thumbs up appreciate you wow that uh is a really big comment but i kind of like it maybe we should do that tonight huh what do you guys think keep these comments huge or small should we just go massive Let's see if I can rearrange the commentos. All right, Christy, what's up? Thanks for being on here, everybody. Good to see you. Dambria, of course, as always. America, fuck yeah. America, so, um, fuck yeah. Kimmy says it was really a good week. That's awesome. Everything is great. It looks like somebody might have asked a question. Let's take a look here. Oh, Miss Barkus, what is up? Thanks for being on here. Let's scroll through here and see what we can find. You guys are on YouTube. That's great. I don't see any Facebookers. Uh, which is an awesome thing. Brody Jade, of course, at the beginning. America, fuck yeah. Christy saying, those lips. I have a feeling she's talking about. <laughs> I have a feeling she's talking about the thumbnail. But it is what it is, and that's all good because you guys have joined me tonight or tonight's episode of How to Become Unstoppable. I made it sound super epic. It's actually going to be not epic. It's going to be a little bit boring. And if you guys just want to jump off now, that's totally fine. I get it. Um, I don't want to hold you. You are fake news. I don't want to hold you to it. Uh, before we get to tonight's uh, questions, well, we can get to the first one. The first one, tonight's question is handsome. Gosh, you guys. Oh, you're just silly. Uh, so the night's question is handsome. That's all I got. Actually, the first question is, do you think focusing on one's love life hinders them? I know the answer. So this person already knows the answer, but they probably want to hear what I have to say about it. Do you think one's love life, do you think focusing on one's love life hinders them? We're going to get to that question here in a minute. I'm going to keep you guys in a bit of suspense. If you guys have questions, you know what to do. The comment section, that's what it's for tonight. I got my trusty, dusty whistle pig. This is the Pit Viper bottle I got given to me as a gift, which is awesome and very low in reserve. So we're going to um, we're gonna get close to it tonight. This is just such a rad. This is just such a rad bottle. You guys can kind of pick up, I guess, a little bit on some of that there. It's not really focusing, but uh, you get the point. Got some whistle pig. Summerstock Whiskey Pit Viper Limited Edition. This bottle's epic. I almost want to like not drink it just so I can keep it. Uh, but this is this is it. So we're gonna pop this bad boy here in a second. Marcus is asking, "How was your week, Joshua? My week is fantabulous. Uh, couldn't be better. And um, just happy to be alive. Happy to be here with you folks. Um, I've been crying a lot, so hence the glasses. Um, I keep those on. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm totally taking them off. I actually only put those on because I was wearing a hood and I." Thought it'd be kind of cool to pit viper glasses, pit viper, whatever. Anyway, 
Maybe it didn't work. I don't want to confuse you guys. And you girls. Marcus, I hope your week's good. Thanks for asking that. Damier, thanks for sending the flames. I don't know what it's for. Uh, but you guys know what to do. Get in the comment section. Get spicy. Let's get the show on the road and this road on the show. Before I answer the first question, I want to show you guys something really fucking cool. I got something. I got something technically for you guys. But it's these ones are for me. But I got something for you guys. You guys want to see what it is? Let me show you. I'm, I'm totally going to show you. Because typically... See if I can switch this. Can you guys see me now? So typically, I use these bad boys. Nothing uh, super special, just little coasters, right? Little fake. Is it real? It's definitely not real leather. It's just little fake uh, material coasters, and they're great, and they do the job. Excuse me. But we have something a little better tonight. So let's see. I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to get spicy with you. I hope you guys don't get a little jealous over here with the gifts. Here we go. You ready? Should we have some epic music for this? Ready? I'm going to go slow. That was seriously so epic. What do you guys think? We got some uh, slate rock coasters. Hope you like them. These things are sick. They were just made for me by uh, Kevin and Tanina. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so these are mine. These are the first two. And these are mine forever. So I get to uh, keep these here in the, in the studio so that I have somewhere to put my glasses. Because what's a coaster? What is a coaster without a glass? Or is, what is a glass? without a coaster. I mean, I'm just, look, I'm not trying to brag. <clears throat> I'm trying to brag. Look, at, just, let's see if we can get this, like, really, look at this. Just look at this. Do you see this? Do you see what's happening here? You get it? See what I'm saying? This is what I'm talking about. I'm just, I'm super pumped. So we're going to get rid of these. And we're going to keep these. Look at that. Listen, listen to this. You guys ready? What the? Jeez, this is awesome. Maybe I should stop cussing. I wonder if I'll get uh, more money from YouTube. Okay, let's see here. What do you guys think about them? You like the coasters? You like the cups? Now I got two coasters. I can put this on there. Oh, this is so sick. It feels, I feel so big pimping. This is badass. So let me know if you guys like the whiskey glasses, right? We're going to have these actually. There's, these are for sale right now at the shop. You really can't have a tattoo shop without whiskey glasses. I don't know what I've been doing for the last five years. And, of course, the Slate Rock coasters. Why do I keep going upside down? Um, these, these are just super sick and like really, really detailed. Look, I don't, I mean, they remind me of like, um, obsidian, right? Kind of like a, what do you call it? Like an arrowhead, right? So they're etched. This is never coming off unless you drop these and break them. They are forever. There we go. So without further ado, let's pour a little drink before we get to the first question. I'm super stalling, not because I don't want to answer the question, but because this shit just makes me fucking pumped. Look at these gifts. Heidi, I hope you're on here tonight because this shit, this whistle pig, this, this, uh, special edition, fuck, I almost don't want to drink it because it's so cool, but, uh, that's what whiskey's for. So why it be that use it? That's my motto. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, let's see here. You guys are talking in the comment section. Brody says we need a high Sierra bourbon. We're working on that. We are working on that actually. Uh, Rochelle says, I want to photography, photo, product, D, your stuffy. Uh, that's awesome. Rochelle, you should do that when you uh, come visit me next time. So we'll find out when that's going to be. When are you going to come see me next? Christy says, slick, and you are not wrong. Uh, Heidi, I'm glad you're here because we're going to uh, cheers to you. To the lens cap. You guys, don't freak out. It's just a lens cap, okay? Couldn't be better. Could not be better. Okay. I'm just going to go through the comment section real quick and see what you guys think. Oh, would you look at that? I also have... <laughs> Man, okay. <laughs> I, we can't start the show off inappropriately. Um, the show. It's funny. It's just me sitting in a room. Do you guys know that? It's just me sitting in a room talking to myself, about myself, to myself. There's nobody else here. Watch. 
Super weird. Uh, but here we go. So I got my friend Jenna's uh, real estate company here. She actually sent me this in the mail. And as a gift, it's, to be honest with you, not my style considering it's so bright, but it's really comfortable. Hopefully you guys like the sweater. If you don't like the sweater, let me know and you can buy it off my back. It's starting bid at $100. Uh, so I got all kinds of gifts. I got whiskey. I got glasses. I got coasters. I got sweaters. What else do I need? I mean, fuck. What's missing? What could possibly be missing? Oh, I know. You guys. Maybe I should pay attention to you now. Okay. And you are right, Heidi. No doubt. <clears throat> Let's see here. Uh, Dave, saying it's super dope. I might have already read that, but I'm going to read it again. Okay. And uh, Rochelle says, I'm coming. I'm coming. Where are you, where are you going? Says, where are you going? What are you, what are you in a hurry for? Uh, Dave says, paint night. Yes, we are going to do a paint night coming up. This is going to be next in a couple weeks. Not this week, but the week after. Is that what is it already come? Oh, my gosh. I got so much to do. I don't want to talk about it. But why night this weekend? Sorry. Scratch that. Revert. No! That's not what I meant. Not not this weekend. No, Technically, God, it is the weekend because no, it's a Friday, no, but no, not Saturday. No! Okay, so we have Y Night. If you guys didn't know about Y Night, now you know, and it is Friday. It says it starts at 5, but you know what? We're pretty much going to be rocking and rolling all day, so you should stop by the shop and check it out. If you don't know anything about it, you can check it out on the website. If you don't want to see the website, look me up on Instagram. If you don't want to see me on Instagram, I don't know why you're here. Whistle my pig. What's up, Jennifer? Thanks for being on here. Good to see you. It's going to be a good show tonight. We got a great topic. The topic is how to become unstoppable. It sounds really over the top, but I think that's kind of the whole point. Um, maybe it's not over the top. To me, it's pretty basic stuff. I kind of try to live this way in a sense. So we'll get to that here in a second. Thanks for sending the flags, Dame Brio. Okay. <clears throat> so the first question that was sent wasn't a question at all, but uh, we'll skip that one. Get to the next one. Do you think focusing on one's love life hinders them? I know this answer. Well, let's see. I don't even think you're on here watching, and what the heck is up with that? I don't see the name popping up. Let's see here. Maybe I'm missing it, and I don't see. Maybe we'll have to come back to this person uh, or point her out here in a minute. So what do you guys think? Do you think focusing, I would love to hear your comments before I say anything, because you. So I think this person thinks they know my answer. Do you think focusing on one's love life hinders them? I know this answer. What do you folks think? Let's get in the comment sec section. Section. <laughs> it's section in the comment section. Uh, and you guys let me know what you think. Does focusing on one's, one's love life hinder them? So you guys let me know. Let's do it quick. Get in the comment section. Let me know what you think about that. Yes or no, or a short explanation. Shorter the better. We can get kind of rapid fire stuff. And then I will uh, give you my two cents because you might not know what to expect. Okay, so it's hard to predict what I'm about to say. So you guys let me know what you think, guys and gals. Oh, there we go. God, that's good. What a night. What a night. So do you think focusing on one's love life hinders you? And this person says, I know the answer. Rochelle says, depends on the love life. Well, let's take it verbatim, right? Do you think focusing on one's love life hinders them? Meaning, let's say... Let's, let's take it to an obvious, right? A love life. Somebody you are in love with or romantic with or serious with, right? Not, let's just exclude, um, I don't know, whatever, one night stand type stuff. So do you think that focusing on your love life hinders you? Uh, Kimmy says, yep, hyper-focusing on one thing limits your growth. I would kind of agree that hyper-focusing on one thing limits your growth, it wouldn't limit your growth on the thing you're hyper-focused on, but it would definitely limit your growth on pretty much everything else. Something else will have to, sacrifices are necessary, um, especially if you want to be great at something. And I mean really great. Uh, Chrissy says, depends on where you're at in said love life. So that's kind of the point is it's a little bit uh, nuanced, but let's just say this is a love life. Somebody was committed. They want to be together. They're committed forever or whatever it is. Um, does this hinder you in your life? So is this... Is focusing on one's love life, love life hinder them? Uh, Barkas says, I believe it's 50-50. It depends on the energy you're putting into it. It can't be positive and negative. Interesting. I believe it can't be positive if not negative. And it can't be negative if not positive. You cannot have one without the other. It does not exist um, by the laws of thermodynamics. Uh, depends on what you're looking for, Jennifer said. And I agree. So I think it's a little nuanced. But again, we're kind of just assuming this is a long 
term committed relationship, is it does it hinder you to focus on said love life? To focus on love life. Brody Jade says, <clears throat> love should not hinder, but enhance your loaf. And I couldn't agree moth. Uh, Rochelle says in all areas, depending on long-term goals, Jennifer says, let's see. Danbury says, yes. I say yes. I stop focusing on relationships and love life. It's it's overwhelming and when you're in a different kind of situation. It's overwhelming when you're in a different kind of situation. Career versus family-oriented and focus. Career versus family-oriented and focused. And yes, depends. So it looks like there's quite a few different answers. Uh, I'll, so I'll take it very literal. Do you think focusing on one's love life hinders you? I think no, because if you want something to work, you have to have a level of focus. If you want something that's worth it, whether you have children or a love life or somebody you care about, whoever it is, to whatever level, actually, to be honest with you, there ha it takes a level of focus. So the question is, do you think focusing on one's love life hinders them? Uh, no, I don't. I think if you focus on your love life, it does not hinder you necessarily. I think what happens is it builds a stronger connection. You have to focus on things for them to, in my opinion, um, flourish. Some people believe, I'm going to stop looking, I'm going to stop expecting, and then it will come to me. Well, I don't know. I know a lot of people say that works for them, but I call bullshit. I see everybody's relationships, and uh, I'm just going to call bullshit. Not everybody's, but I see a lot of people's. Relationships take effort. doesn't matter who it's with, your children, your comrades, your coworkers. Family, loved ones, love life, sex life, does not matter. It takes, it, it takes intention, right? It takes intention. So I think it's a good question. Um, my first opinion is, yes, if you focus on a love life, it will take away from other things. It has to. Uh, otherwise, you, I mean, we don't have an infinite amount of energy. So you have a finite amount of daily or lifetime energy. So yes, it will hinder other things in that regard. But at the same time, Love, I mean, if you really experience and have and are sharing love with somebody, no matter what the conditions are, um, how can that be a hindrance, right? I don't, think, um, I don't think there's anything that triumphs love. I really don't because I think love in the end is really, like tonight's uh, topic is, man, I'm already getting warm. I thought I'd wear this sweater to like look cool and support, but it's already getting warm. I think love is the extreme end of pain, right? Love is one end, pain is the other. So it's a tipping scale or it's a graduating scale more than it is a tipping scale. And I think that the further away you are from pain, the closer you are to love. And the further you are from love, the closer you are to pain. So that's an oversimplification. There's much more to it. But that's a good way of putting it in my perspective. And so, no, I don't think that love can hinder you. It might take from other things, yes, but I think that it's fucking worth it. And love is a wonderful thing. And you shouldn't live without it. And you should let it in and not fight it. If you're in a position right now where you're fighting it, maybe that's where you belong. But I can tell you, if you find a place where you can accept it, whatever form it may be, um, I personally don't believe there are multiple different types of love. I think there's one type of love, and it's called love. I don't think there is any other type of love. I think you can love somebody and find them very attractive. I think you can love somebody and want to work with them every day, and you look forward to your job. I think you can love somebody and enjoy your life with them, whether you're siblings or you know, cousins or not related at all, just friends. So I don't think love is, I don't think there's such thing as romantic love. I think there's love. And you can have love and be romantic. But they are not the same thing and they're not linked together, right? Because you can have romance and no love. And you can have, you know, friendship and no love. You can have coworkers and no love. But you can definitely have love and everything else aside from it. So I don't try to get those things too confused. So that's my opinion. If you guys have any, um, if there's any naysayers out there, just keep it to yourself because we already talked about it. Beat that dead horse. Uh, Jennifer says, I thought the saying was, when you are not looking, you will find it. Uh, that is not the saying. The, say, the saying is, well, I mean, some people do believe that, and I think it's horse BS. The saying that I believe is more true and pretty much ultimate truth is, seek and you shall. You can finish the rest. Seek and you shall. So, <clears throat> Damier says, but being obsessed with it isn't good. Too much of anything isn't good. See, I disagree completely. I totally disagree with that. Being obsessed with it isn't good. I disagree. I think it could be great. I think it could be wonderful. It could be magical. But I think being obsessed with something that doesn't give you a return, definitely terrible to a dangerous point. She's saying being obsessed with it isn't good. I disagree. 
Um, th- but that shoe doesn't always fit everybody. For me, it does, but for some people, it doesn't. And uh, respect to that. And then too much of anything isn't good. I also disagree. So I think there's no way to get too much love. There's no way to get too much, too many skills. There's no way to get, you know, too many, let's say, experiences or too much time. I mean, I think, um, I think there are plenty of things you should overindulge in, um, in a sense. And I mean that respectfully. I, I just think that too many people are um, obsessed and they get too much of the bad things. So they have a whole life riddled with things that they know sh- they should get left less of. So they assume everything should fall into that category, and I don't agree. I think if you love something, you should go super fucking deep, whether it's your career or your family or a person, whatever it is, a book, a story, something you want to make. I, I think not enough people, that's tonight's topic. It's how to become unstoppable. I think not enough people, um, I think everybody's playing safe. Everybody's being cool. Everybody's being chill. Um, everybody is being safe. And I think that does not, we'll talk more about this after the, Q, the Q&A part, which is here at the beginning. Um, it'll all tie into what I believe to become unstoppable, meaning how to live your life the way you want to and how nothing can get in your way. Or if anything does get in your way, it won't stop you. My opinion of being unstoppable means you'd have to kill me to stop me. So yes, by definition, everything and anybody is unstoppable. Is stop. Everybody can be stoppable, but to become unstoppable means the only way you're going to get me to quit is you're going to have to kill me because I'm going to keep going. So that's kind of the, that is the topic for tonight. Okay. Uh, Heidi says, love will help you grow in all aspects of your life. I totally agree. I think love is the thing worth hanging on to when things are really fucked up. Okay. Look at this. We got Natalie on here. Natalie, we are 20 minutes in, 30 minutes in, and we are on your first question. So we're going to uh, skip this and see how it all ties, ties back in together. Uh, Amanda, what's up? Thank, thanks for being on here. Good to see you. Okay. Uh, Damier says, I'm down for love, but if you're stalking me, that's too much. Also, I disagree. I think if you love somebody and you really want them and they're stalking you, you're fucking pumped. I think if somebody's stalking you and you don't like it, I think uh, it's because you don't like them. And <laughs> that's my opinion. I think if you really want somebody and they're stalking you, it's like the coolest thing ever. That's not advice. Don't take that too personal. That was uh, allegedly, right? I don't want to get in trouble for saying and encouraging bad behavior. Mm. This whiskey is getting me tonight. It's not only getting me, it's also real warm. <laughs> whiskey be doing that, right? It's kind of like wine. Like if you want to warm up, a little bit of wine goes a long way. Okay. Let's get a little bit of airflow in this biatch. All right. So let's get to the next question because we have quite a few and we don't want to take all night. Um, if we did 30 minutes for each question, we would be here for the next six hours, seven hours. 10 hours, maybe more. Do you feel you hit rock bottom in your life? If, if yes, how did you get back up? Man, we could spend all night on these questions. Maybe we won't get to all of them. Now nah, we'll get to them all. We will. All right. So the question is, do you feel you hit rock bottom in your life? If yes, how did you get back up? <laughs> Natalie says stalking can be fun. I just think if you love somebody and they're stalking you, it's like the coolest fucking thing ever. Okay. Matter of fact, I think if you're really obsessed and in love with somebody and you desire them and you're passionate, oh man, um, I don't, I think everybody in this uh, room, me, everybody agrees that if you're really into somebody, you get, uh, you get a st- little stalkerish just in general, like what's on their phone? Who are they talking to? Where they're at? What are they, what are they doing? Are they really doing the thing they're saying? Are they lying? Are they truthful? Are this insecurities pop up, which is really the topic of the night is, uh, how to become unstoppable. It's going to link right into our insecurities. So. That'll be uh, interesting to tie to together a little bit later. So the question, do you feel you hit rock bottom in your life? If yes, how'd you get back up? Yes, I do think that I've hit rock bottom in my life. I've experienced, I think, in my, I think I've uh, experienced the low that uh, any lower and I wouldn't be here today. So yes, I have experienced that. I know that's obviously glazing over a ton there, but I have experienced it. And it's not what I believe. It's something I know that I've experienced rock bottom. And it says, uh, the question is, if you, or how did you, do you feel you hit rock bottom in your life? And if yes, how did you get back up? Well, getting back up, I'll tell you this. We talked about community last episode. Uh, Community had a lot to do with it. I could not have done it without other people. It'd be impossible. If I didn't have my kids, if I didn't have my friends and my family, my mother, my father, my sisters, um, close friends of mine that were there for me, I would have never made it. There's no way. There would have been absolutely no way. And uh, in that order, I would say kids, family, friends, if they weren't, if I didn't have that, I'd, I don't think I'd be here today. 
it could have been way too hard. And so, <clears throat> yes, I hit rock bottom. And how did I get back up? I got back up because I had a good community. But I will tell you this. Uh, my philosophy in life is the skills you bring to the gunfight, right? The skills you bring to the gunfight are going to be all you rely on, right? Your lowest level of lowest form of training will be what you rely on in times of need. So if you are really, really good in a gunfight when it's in training, that's one thing. But when it comes to the real thing, I can tell you right now, um, you'll be tested and you will result to your lowest form of training. And I believe that when you hit rock bottom in life, it reveals your lowest form of training, meaning you're the real true you stripped down to everything. When you uh, hit that rock bottom, you are exposed completely. You can no longer lie or fake it. You are reduced down to your lowest level, your lowest form of training in life. So if you physically haven't trained well and you're unhealthy, not a good position if you hit rock bottom. If you hit rock bottom and you're unhealthy and you don't have a good community, <laughs> yeah, you are real unhealthy and you are absolutely screwed uh, if, the, if this is happening, if your community is shot or if it's a bad community or people want to drink with you and smoke with you and go down that path with you or invite you over and just go some deep, dark hell. If you hit rock bottom, you have no health and you have no good community and you've been building a weak mindset before you hit rock bottom, meaning whatever destroyed you, whatever brought you to rock, rock bottom, um, it, it you might have built your foundation on a house of cards instead of a nice, heavy, thick foundation that maybe maybe shakes, rumbles, or cracks a little when everything falls down. And if that's the case, I look at life like this. Build a foundation, which is being raised, right? It has a lot to do with genetics. It has a lot to do with parenting. It has a lot to do with conditioning. It has a lot to do uh, with how you treated yourself up to the point in which you hit rock bottom in your adulthood. So the tools you bring to the gunfight are all you'll be reduced to having, which means if when you hit rock bottom, your foundation is shaky, you're pretty fucking screwed. If your foundation is solid, meaning you've taken care of yourself physically, right? You're healthy. Now, if you get into a drinking binge, you get into a depression binge, if you start losing weight or gaining weight or just really treating yourself terribly for a couple of years, you've built such a fortress previously to that, that it's going to be real hard to actually disrupt it. That's why old people die, quote, quote unquote, of a broken heart. Because they really bring a bat, like people don't die typically of broken hearts at 25 years old, right? So to speak. Um, people die of broken hearts in their later years where their heart and their body is weaker. And so the, again, the, the foundation must be strong. You gotta have a community. You have to have good health and you absolutely have, a, have to have a strong mindset. Otherwise you, it can really consume you and maybe there's no way out. So do you feel you've hit rock bottom in your life? And if yes, how did you get back up? I was built of a foundation that yes, was rocked, but not cracked did not break, did not fall apart. It might, it might've broke, but it didn't fall apart, right? There was still something I could build on top of. So uh, I might hide the cracks here and there, but they're there. And uh, that's it. My foundation, the tools that I brought to the gunfight uh, paid off. So the relationships I built with people that were healthy, the physical relationship I built with my body and my mind and my spirit, all those things were so healthy and so strong that when I did go down a dark path, um, no matter how fucked up I got for so many years, it was hard to kill me. It was impossible, it didn't work tried and it could not rock me. So there we go. Uh, Kimmy says, watching you rebuild has been one of the most beautiful things I've ever witnessed. Thank you, Kimmy. Super rad of you to say. I appreciate it. I wonder where this, let's see if we get some sound effects up in here, up in this biatch. Turn that up a little bit. Kimmy, thank you for saying that. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Natalie says, I agree. I hit rock bottom, pushed everyone away. It took letting go of anger and letting people back in. So yeah, rock bottom, what gets you out? The foundation you brought to it. Desiree Victoria thinks Brown Air says, on point. Uh, Amanda says, we are so thankful you got back up and built a bigger community. Man, uh, me too. Me freaking too, for sure. Uh, Audra's on here. What's up? Audra, good to see you. And of course, thank you. America, fuck yeah! Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's do this. So next question. I really like that one, by the way. That, that's a really good one. What, what helps you at rock bottom? If you hit rock bottom, what saves you? What keeps you from going over the edge? The foundation you build before it. That's why it's so critical. Um, you know, it's so critical. Like, man. Okay, your advice to someone too overwhelmed to see a way forward. Really good question. Your advice to someone too overwhelmed to see a way forward. 
it's, it's actually really simple. I learned this from a friend of mine who battled cancer for years. Her whole family went to, through it with her. And, uh, it was a really dark time that I got to witness from my end, uh, looking in and to see a family persevere so strong, so put together so beautifully, but not easily, man, these, these people fucking, wow, they went through it. Um, and watching them closely and being close to them and then watching them heal over the years. And now they're beautiful and healthy in their family. Like damn near brings me to spiritual tears when I see them. Cause they're so wonderful. You guys know who you are. You know who I'm talking about. You guys are amazing. Um, but their whole family, man, just was rocked. And I've known them for so long, their whole family I've known for so long that seeing them transform through that pain and suffering, you know, it was like a seven, almost 10 year, I think uh, period where it just wasn't good, man. It was like absolute hell. And I mean, even her husband actually bought a vehicle he could sleep in so that he could drive down to LA to be closer to her because she was in the hospital and every chance he got, he would drive down there and stay in the van. So he was in the parking lot, not too far from her for years. So my advice to someone who's over, too overwhelmed to see a way forward comes from a good friend of mine. You know who you are if you're watching. I appreciate you. And she said this to me once when she saw me at my lowest. She says, you know, Josh, it's okay right now. You don't have to be great and good and wonderful and, you know, successful at all these things in life that, you know, mattered so much to me. And she could see that she knows me. So she knows how much, you know, getting good and, and living my best life possible and persevering matters to me. And she saw how much that bothered me that I wasn't in a position to be able to move forward with my life. And she said, that's okay. She was the first person to tell me because she knew all too well. She goes, that's okay, Josh, right now you're surviving. So your advice to someone too overwhelmed to see a way forward? The question is, my answer comes from a good friend and it is sometimes it's okay just to survive. So there you go. Oh, there's a lot of questions in here. I'm gonna try to keep up with you guys. If there's anything important you want me to address, um, I'll do my best. I apologize if I don't get to it. <clears throat> Amanda says, losing my sister-in-law almost consumed me, but the good Lord has opened doors lately and showed me the purpose and reason. And that's why it happens, so that we can push through it, right? We're always given the tools, and thank you for saying that, Amanda. I know that's not easy, but that's why we are given the tools to move forward. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Danbury says, I def definitely need to get back in touch with the healthy me. I'm working on uh, it's becoming a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. Working on your health physically, mentally, and spiritually is... And, and financially, it's just an absolutely wonderful thing, and you should do it because if things fall apart one day, and look, all of us have experienced hard shit. I'm going to tell you right now, if you've experienced hard shit, let's imagine there's something even fucking harder. How would you fare? And if the answer isn't you would do just fine, if the answer isn't with confidence, but maybe with some hesitation, then uh, you have some work to do because even though you think you've hit rock bottom, even though you think life has kicked you in the ass many a times, uh, what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong, right? Some people are. Somebody's going to be wrong, and they're going to think this is it, and it couldn't get worse, and then it's going to fucking get worse. So you need to take care of yourself. You need to take care of yourself, and that's the best advice you can get in regards to how to handle those types of things. I uh, appreciate you, Amanda. Okay, <clears throat> so my advice to somebody too overwhelmed to see a way forward is just survive. Next question is, have you prepared for the breakdown of society? If yes, how? <laughs> I like these questions. These are cool. By getting these glasses at High Sierra Tattoo Co., you can pick them up for two for $25. <laughs> uh, I'm also going to show you this because, Coots, I don't think you were on here when I did so, and this just makes me super fucking happy. Would you take a look at that? I mean, I got to do it together, right? Because it's just, it's the thing. It's the right thing to do. So let's just look at this. Huh? Come on now. What's the deal? You know what time it is. <laughs> okay. Have you prepared for the breakdown of society? If, if yes, how? Yes, of course I have. It's the same way you uh, prepare for any breakdown or any collapse. But the only difference is it's not just your body, spirit, and mind, and community, and all these things that you need to fortify. It's also your protection. You need to be able to have some resources. So the question is, have you been prepared for the breakdown of society? If yes, how? Well, one is I don't think the breakdown of society is going to be very abrupt. I think it's going to be a slow burn. It's going to be a death by a thousand paper cuts. And it's going to be boiling. If you guys ever heard, somebody can answer it here. How to boil a frog. Have you ever heard this? Um, so how do you boil, boil a frog? That's what's going to happen in society. So if somebody wants to give that answer, I appreciate it. <laughs> how do you boil a frog? What's the answer to that? So how do you prepare for a breakdown? Uh, it's really easy. Stay really fit, as fit as you can. I don't care if you're old. I don't care if you're young. I don't care if you're a woman or a man. You should stay really, really fit because you have a duty to your community and uh, not to be a nuisance 
and I hate to tell you this, but if you're not fit, if you're not healthy, as healthy as you can be, then you are by definition a nuisance. And if you ever understand how wolf packs move and act, what makes them really weak um, also is one of the things that makes them really strong. But in the end, the weakest, uh, they, a lot of times they hold down the pack and they can starve to death. So you got to be really careful. Um, you are responsible for yourself. So if society collapses, make sure you're as well prepared as you can. I think first with your health, that's number one, because it doesn't matter how many bullets you have, you can't walk up a fucking hill. Uh, so how do you prepare? It's one, get fit, right? Build a community. That's everything. People think they're going to hold down their fort with just them. Like one woman and a gun, you're going to hold down shit. You're going to have to have 20, 30 people. You need 24-hour surveillance. You're not going to be able to <laughs> hold down a fort uh, by yourself when you're asleep. I don't care if you have chihuahuas. They're not going to help you. Put their little sweaters on, their booties. I see you girls out there. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Natalie says, Dane gave me, or give thanks every morning. It puts your mind in the right place to face your day. Yes, gratitude is a great way to uh, start. And you are right. They are very cool. America, fuck yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, so this question touches on a really important topic. How do you prepare for the breakdown of society? Uh, it's, you should always be prepared. You know, it, it, unfortunately, it takes really hard shit to smack you in the fucking face to wake you up to go, oh, my God. You know, like recently, uh, somebody breaking into the shop and um, it just makes me realize like, oh, there's a huge weak point in our perimeter and I have to fix that. I have to do something about it. Right? I can't just put the door back together the way it was. If it got through, I got to do something new. And uh, re reinforce my perimeter. So I got to readjust and, and make changes. And so I think that to be prepared, uh, you, unfortunately, you got to get smacked in the face a couple times. That's why backpacking, camping, traveling, raising animals, hunting, you know, far farming, raising families, all these things, building things, being construction, being useful, right? You sitting at a desk doing receptionist work is not going to prepare you for hard times like what we're talking about, some sort of societal collapse. You getting off your ass and physically doing things, everybody knows, you know, you're raised by anim around animals, by animals, with animals, maybe you are an animal, you're raised as an animal. Those are the things that are going to help you, right? Playing video games isn't going to help you. Being really good at driving a car isn't going to help you, right? Getting really good at being a keyboard warrior, looking at your phone and swiping left and right and seeing TikTok videos for four hours a day on average, that's not going to help you. There's nothing there. Your thumbs are going to be really quick or what? Nothing. You don't even shoot guns with your thumb. They should make those though. You guys would be good at it. Um, so you have to be prepared all the time. So let the things in life kick you in the ass and learn from them so that you can fortify and reinforce your fortress and stop being such a loser, you know? <clears throat> Damer says the frog stays in the water and it slow, as it slowly heats, it doesn't notice. And that's exactly what's happening to our society. They're not going to make it abrupt until it's time, meaning we're already so weak that it won't matter and there would be nothing to fight against in regards to us. They're not going to turn up the heat fast. They're going to turn up real slow, so slow that you're going to be totally oblivious to it and it's already going to happen. You're going to be caught blindsided. And by the time your grandkids are our age, they won't even know what they're missing. They'll have no idea because you didn't pass it on because you were on TikTok for six hours a day. Okay. <laughs> Christy says she has a Yorkie, not a Chihuahua. And Dave has a couple of pit bulls. Ian, what's up? Thanks for being on here. Giles, he said he just got off work and made it. That's awesome. Hey, Ian. Flex. Do it. America, fuck yeah! Okay, these are really good questions. Let's get to the next one. I looked into sovereign status, and basically, if you do it, you are no longer a U.S. citizen. That's interesting. Um, well, in regards to the last question, if that's kind of related to it, I think it is. Uh, it's, I don't think it's really going to help you when you're fighting governments. Governments, uh, they're too big and too powerful, unfortunately, now. Yeah, that's a totally different subject, I would think, but let's get to the next one. Okay. How do you get free of the enslavement we are all put in by an evil government at birth? Wow, man, this could be the whole topic. Man, you are asking some really good questions, and I want to answer them best I can. I'm glad you guys are on here. If you guys are on here and you haven't sent the thumb up, do that now. Just go into wherever it is at in the comments. Look, if I can do it, right, if I can do it from here, I wonder if I can actually, I can. If I can go on YouTube right now and send my self a self a thumbs up, um, if I can do this, I'm going to do it now. If I can do it and you haven't done it, I don't know what you're doing here. Like, what's going on? Come on, let's do this. Okay, where are they? Let's give ourselves one of these. So comment section, 
this, this. You can send all kinds of stuff. Let's see here. What can you do? Can you like the action? How do you like the page? See, I got to figure this out before you guys do. Ooh, I like all these little stickers. These are cool. There's all kinds of new stuff on here. What's going on? You guys see that? If I could send this, you guys can send it. Ooh, I almost sent myself money right now. <laughs> I can't thumbs up my own video, so it won't let me, but you guys can, and you should. Oh, wait. Yes, I can. I have to get out of there. See, if I can do that, you can do it, so thank you. Do that. Do that now. There's no reason why we shouldn't have at least 20 plus something thumbs up. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Ian, I couldn't agree more to your comment there. Uh, Damber says, I heard California is going to tax people that have lived here for 10 years or longer, no matter what status you move to. Uh, they, they're try they've been trying to do that for a long time. That's nothing new. They're also going to try to tax you for uh, being of a certain nationality or race, <laughs> right? Um, Okay, let's see here. <clears throat> Barkus wants to start a compound. Uh-oh. I'm going to be the tattoo guy. Is that what you're thinking? Uh, Danbury says, Texas is going to start a civil war too. Texas is not going to start a civil war. I can tell you guys this right now. Oh, this is... Think of the last civil war. The last civil war was between the North and the South, right? The, the South wanted to succeed and the North said no and... They wanted, they wanted to fight for their own independence, and it wasn't happening. And they had to fight the North. And essentially what they had to fight was the U.S. government. You had to fight the Confederate government, essentially, and the, the Federation, uh, the Confederation, sorry. And you had to fight the uh, North, which was the United States of America. And here's the thing. Everybody back then had muskets and cannons. Everybody. Nobody had tanks. Nobody had jets. Nobody had nukes. Now, this is the problem. Okay, you want to have civil war? You think the military is going to be on your side? I hate to tell you this, and I su totally support those who uh, fight for our country, um, you know, wholeheartedly. And I have nothing but respect for these men and women. But you think law enforcement? I just talked to a couple of police officers today, actually, uh, even a friend of mine, and I even asked him this question. You guys tell me, do you think law enforcement is going to stand down in regards to like, say we had some sort of civil war, and it was against us and the system. Well, police are part of the system. Military is part of the system. All of these g programs are part of the system, and they have a lot more <laughs> reinforcements than we do. So what kind of civil war do you think it would turn into? It's not going to be the government letting, you know, the Bloods and the Crips fight against the country, fight over the country. <laughs> this is going to be the, the federal government who has nuclear bombs against a few people that are willing to take their disagreements to such a degree that they're willing to fight for it against a government that could, what do you think is going to happen? You really think the military is going to be on our side or the police? Do you really think, I, of course, there's going to be a few good apples in there and they will fall from the tree and exit. But do you think it's going to be half or the majority? Do you think it's going to be a lot? Do you think it's going to be a measurable amount of people that will not follow the government's, the federal government's rules? Then you're high as fuck. If you don't think that the government is going to order them to do these things and that they'll stand down instead by, you know, protecting the American people, I can promise you right now they will do whatever the government bids them to do. Uh, Amanda says, nope, we the people will be. Uh, the pro Like I said, the problem is with that <laughs> is there will, it's, I think it's annihilation. Okay. The, the, the last civil war, the last civil war, that's kind of crazy, too, because um, I believe there's like ties to uh, why the Civil War happened and um, the presidency and trying to um, what is what was the word um, trying to remove somebody or trying to keep somebody. Off. The last time they tried to keep somebody off of the roster, essentially, for getting voted in. The last time they did that it led to a civil war and now they're doing it again. And this is the second time it's happened. So. Uh, back then, the government, federal government had muskets and cannons. The f North and the South both had muskets and cannons. Well, the North and the South no longer have muskets and cannons. Okay, the South has some very restricted, very limited, very hindered machinery. I shouldn't say that. I'm not saying we're the South or who is the South or not. I'm just using it as a metaphor. Calm down. But right now, the North, quote unquote, and South, metaphorically, let's say the North is the federal government and the South is we the people right? The red-blooded Americans. I'm just saying, 
you better hold on to your fucking britches because if you're fighting against that shit, you're going to be, you think the Jews had to hide. I'm going to tell you right now, it uh, will not be pretty. Your firearms will do very little against them. So I'm just saying, I'm not trying to be a doomsday or I'm just being realistic. What are you going to do against, you know, the, the Tomahawks and the fighter jets and the, the super Hornets, the multi-million dollar jets that you, what are you going to do against that? You know, nothing. You're, that's the answer. You'll do nothing against them. That doesn't mean you can't be resistant. So the question might be different than like, what do you, that begs the question, what would you do then? Maybe we can talk about that. Okay. So let me see here. Um, so the real question was, how do you get free of the enslavement? We're all put in by the evil government at birth. Uh, not, you don't get free of it. You don't get free of the matrix. You just live within the matrix, understanding what it is so that you could best play the game to your advantage. That's all you can do. So how do you get free of the enslavement? It's really easy. You first have to know the game that's being played. And if you don't know the rules to the game and you don't know the game that's being played, then you're not even on the board. So you can't even make a move, right? P too many people wish the world was the way they want it to be and they want to see it the way they want it to be because it feels better. They get their chakras aligned, right? They get their stones out and their crystals. Yeah, I can guarantee you if shit hits a fan, you put your fucking stones right away. Crystals and chakras go right out the window. So I'm just saying in, a rea in reality, uh, we, don't, we don't play games with star signs. Um, we can only do that if we're spoiled little brats who, you know, and, and maybe that's great, but spoiled little brats who get to go down that path, that's my opinion. And you think Ukraine right now is uh, rubbing crystals together? That should sound stupid, I hope, to some of you. <clears throat> uh, Natalie says, the last civil war broke out in our country and put the labor tax in effect, which was supposed to be temporary. Um, yeah, so actually... <laughs> The Civil War broke out, and do you know who started the labor tax? Who started um, taxing income? Do you know who it was? It was the boy we all root for, right? We think he's on our team. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. I don't know. Uh, the government doesn't make temporary moves, and back then they knew it. Now we know it. So you, you can say it was supposed to be temporary, but that's like saying, um, you know, I, was never, I never meant to hurt you, but uh, if you're a bad person and you know this person is a bad person, you're going to get hurt by them just in general. And you get hurt by people by being around them. It's just natural. It's how humans are, right? We're animals. So the last civil war broke out and they put the country in a tax, uh, a labor tax in effect and was supposed to be temporary. Natalie, uh, yeah. And think about who did that, like I said. Um, Damer says something big is definitely in the works. Yeah, it's been, but this isn't new. This, like the, None of this is new, right? This is just the end result of a tyrannical government. Te what Texas is doing right now is what people do in relationships. When relationships are really terrible and you know you should leave, but you don't want to because you're like 30 and how are you going to find somebody to do it and you got kids or only five or six and you don't want to leave because you know you should and you know you want to, but you're not going to. And I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying. Texas is that. And now the relationship's so bad, the kids are a little grown, the relationship is so bad they have to leave. So at that point now where they're trying to find a new baby daddy, right? And uh, it's a little late. It's a little late. You're already old and you've passed that buck already. So I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying don't expect fucking miracles out of this other than probably a lot more problems. So, and that's okay, right? We've always had to deal with those. Uh, Ian says our military is very trained to support our government no matter what. I have military family and friends and you are not wrong, even if they love you, right? We did read the stories up at the Civil War, right? Read these stories about people who, you know, fought against their neighbors, or their own family, right? Traitors and switching sides. I'm telling you, everybody wants to be on one side until it's losing, and then they jump to the other one. Okay, <clears throat> Natalie says you get free by learning. Maybe get free. Okay, you get free by learning to survive and thrive within the evil, corrupt system. Well, what did God's people do? Did they make their whole own system? Did they, leave, did they completely destroy? Maybe God did, but, but did God's people completely destroy the evil governments? What does the Bible tell us what to do in regards to our actions, in regards, in, in regards to the evil that's uh, being done, or that has always been being done? It's to suffer it for as long as it's able to be suffered. So look into that all you want, but that's, what, that's essentially what it says, right? Um, when something becomes unsufferable is when you have to make extre take extreme action. And until it's unsufferable, you are supposed to suffer it. So you have to pay, uh, what was the phrase? It's, uh, you have to pay, it wasn't the Pharaoh. I'm getting, I'm getting it twisted a little, but uh, you have to pay your taxes. You have to pay your dues, whether the king's good or bad. That is your civic duty. 
right? He does not say to go against it. It is not a, unless it's, unless you're dying, unless you have no money and you are literally have no other choice, then uh, going against the system is not necessarily the answer. So yes, Caesar, that's right. Thank you for saying that. Okay. <clears throat> so let's get to the next question. This is a good one because we're going to bring up actually right now a beautiful screenshot. Oh man, would you look at that? So next question, the progress of your work and your growth is proof of unstoppable growth. I like that. Thank you very much. The progress of your work and your growth is proof of an unstoppable growth. So yes, uh, you can't kill me because I've already died before and I'm back. And so now you're going to have to kill me again to stop me. Um, this time I will not self-destruct and I have learned my lesson loud and clear the message is there and um, I'm here to give it my all. So this tattoo right here represents that. When I finish this tattoo, I'm going to tell you guys a quick story. And this is really important because this is today's topic is how to become unstoppable. I'm going to tell you about this tattoo right now. Day in, day out. Some of my days are so fast that when I sit down and start tattooing, I look up, it's eight, it's nine, it's 10. I got to go home. I got, just like everybody else, we got a life. We got kids. We got things to do, right? We have, I'm trying to go to the gym. I'm trying to take care of my family. I'm trying to take care of the home. You know, I'm not complaining. I'm just stating that uh, I, when I get a free second, right? This is my time. I've told you guys this many times. This, this podcast is my relaxing time. My client today, I tattooed. I even, he was like, hey, like, what days do you take off? I go, Sunday. But it's mostly just like catching up on errands and hanging out with kids and then uh, sleep in a little, right, and get to bed early. So it's a very short day. That being said, uh, this is my downtime here on Wednesday. And I appreciate you guys for joining me because I love it. And I hope you love it too. And my point is, like today, I tattooed this guy. Uh, this is not the one that's up right now, but I tattooed another portrait today. And I sat down and started drawing and cut. I got so into it, so focused, so in my zone that I looked up and it was 7 o'clock and I had to leave so I can get here, be on time. Still wasn't, didn't get to eat. I'm just saying, that's the price you have to pay if you want to get really good. I used to think I could do it leisurely. I used to think, I should, man, if I'm so miserable, this must not be the path. If I don't feel good about what I'm doing every day and align with my fucking chakras, then I must be doing it wrong. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, the better I get in life only comes from pain and suffering. I'm going to tell you right now. It never feels good when you have to transform. Because if you have to transform, you're something you don't want to be, and there's something else you'd like to be. And the only way you're going to take those moves, which hurt really bad because they're very hard, they're very difficult, it's going to uh, reveal all your inadequacies. It's going to paint you as a target for people to throw shit at, and it will stick. So if you're trying to get better, you're making a claim. And you, when you make a claim, you have to recognize your weaknesses. And when you rec recognize your weaknesses, it hurts when people throw shit at it. So unless you want to go through all that, then don't plan on being good at anything. But if you want to be really good at something, you're going to have to suffer. And I hate that people try to butter it up for others because then they think, like I have growing up, I used to think, man, this is so hard. This must not be the path. Try another path. And then that one, it's so hard. This must not be the path. Try another path. Everybody thinks they're just not in the right place. You're in the fucking right place. You're just not sticking with it because you thought it was supposed to feel like unicorns. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you want to get great at something, I don't care if it's family or anything else, you need to fucking get in it. You need to get in it. It's going to hurt. It's going to suck. Your back's going to hurt. Your neck's going to hurt. Your life's going to hurt. Your family's going to hate you. Your friends are going to ridicule you. Your shop's going to get broken into. You know, uh, taxes are coming. Bills are coming. Things fall apart. Things break. Customers get mad. People sue you. <sighs> but if you keep your grinding and you keep, going, keep on going and you just fucking get after it and get to it and stop your fucking bitching, well, I'm not trying to say right now that I'm the best tattoo artist in the world because I know artists 10 times better than me. But what I will say is this. About 15 years ago, a little less, I don't even know what it would be like 2010, 2011. I drew a photo. This is not it, but I drew a photo and it was of a famous person. And I just picked somebody famous so everybody knew who it would be. It's actually hanging up in my room and everybody does know who it is. I asked somebody, like, who's a really famous person I could draw? So the rest of my life, people will be like, hey, that's that one guy and gets attention because I want to be a portrait artist. And I wasn't at the point in 2012, 2011, maybe 2010. And I decided I want to be a realistic portrait artist. I always dreamt about it, but it seemed so hard I never tried. And then I thought, you know what? I'm fucking done. I'm going to try it. So I started drawing. I thought, well, if I could draw it, then I can maybe tattoo it. So I got really good at drawing it. And then I realized, man, let's start tattooing it. But I sucked. It took years, years and years to get good at portraits. There's been a few portraits that were monumental along the way. And I'm going to tell you right now, this portrait, when I finished it, had a nice little moment of realizing, holy fuck, I did it. 
Now, I'm not saying I'm the best in the world. I'm not making any claims other than I, I beat who I used to be monumentally, right? When I started, I wasn't good. I didn't know what I was doing. And I thought, man, if I give it my all, if I focus and it feels good and I'm doing it right, my chakras align, I'll be a great portrait artist at no time if I do it right. Yeah, it's been like 20 fucking years I've been working at this shit. It's been over almost 15 years I've been working at portraits. And I just got to a place where I can look at this and go, <laughs> man, oh, there we go. There it is, folks. There is the portrait right there. The one that when, it, when I finished it, this one really got to me because I had accomplished finally something like I'll zoom in a little. I accomplished something I've always wanted to accomplish. And there it is in the flesh, literally. And uh, it felt so, oh, man, I can't describe it. it. It felt like an absolute reward, almost like God just held my heart for a second and said, just breathe. And then he let it go and said, it's yours and get back to work. And here I am. So that's what it's like. So if you don't want to stare off into that abyss, and uh, like Elon Musk said, just staring off into the abyss, chewing on glass, then just be mediocre. And that's okay. Nobody's mad at you. Stay out of my way. Stay out of our way. It's totally fine. But it's not for me. And if it's not for you and you know it, you're going to have to accept the fact that you have to stop walking on eggshells, stop worrying about hurting people's feelings, and you, got, you need to get to fucking work. You need to build up your belief in yourself. You have to almost become crazy to the normals. The normals are going to see you as weird. They're going to hear the things I say, and they're going to say, no, that must not be it. Josh is just a miserable guy because he this and this and this. No, I'm going to tell you right now, my edge is my misery. All right, tonight's topic is about how to become unstoppable. Here's how you do it. You harness the misery and the pain and the suffering inside you that will never go away, that is part of you, even written since you were born, before you can even conceptualize it, it is in your DNA. It's in your blood. It's in your brain. You're going to inherit the sins of your fathers, and it's going to hurt. And If you can take that and you can dig up out that bag, all the energy in the world, because you can. See, if you're always waiting to be happy and line with your chakras and feel good, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not that often. That's not how you're going to feel that often. Most of us don't feel that way that often. But if you can dig deep down in the shit that you're trying to unbury and uncover so you can face who you really are and use that as motivation and, and drive, well, my friend, that is endless. There's an endless supply. So now we can get to work. Okay, so I'm going to leave this picture up for a second, get to the comments. Sorry, uh, I neglected you for a minute. Just kind of went off on a tangent. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, guys, let me know. Let me know what you think about this episode. I want to hear from it. I'm going to go ahead and read some of these comments and catch up to you. Um, Damir says, I try to tell myself every day I will not self-destruct. That's good. Um, I tell myself every day you're going to have to kill me to stop me. So I don't know if that's similar, but that's what I do. Okay, did you finish the tattoo today? Ian says, and I say, yes, Ian, I did finish the tattoo today. Not this one up right now. I had a different one that I finished today. Um, Kircher Tattoo says, cheers, man. I'm just tuning in. Thanks for being on here. appreciate you. I'm going to catch up to the comments, so I'm a little behind you guys. Just bear with me for a minute. Uh, Damer says, there's no easy way to accomplish greatness. That is a fact. Thank you so much for sharing it, 100%. Damer says, failure will be your biggest lessons. Yes, you will never learn unless you fail. So be prepared to fail. Matter of fact, not just prepared, but encourage it. And you should encourage it with your kids too. Don't make them feel bad for failing. Failing is the process. Kircher says, uh, here working on a pen drawing as I tune in. And yes, back hurts, neck, hurt, neck hurts. I will be continued to push forward. Right on, dude. Right on. So there you go. Uh, da, da, da. What an amazing feeling Jennifer is saying. Uh, the teeth. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Proud of your accomplishments, Josh. You're always inspiring. Thank you, Ian. I appreciate you very much. Thank you. And Lenore, thank you. Those lips, great talent. She's forever young. Um, not sure who you're talking about. Okay, uh, Mike's saying I date her, maybe forever young. Yes, bro. So, <clears throat> Mike, you're just weird, and it's a tattoo, so calm your britches. Okay, I caught up to the comments. Thank you, guys. Uh, let me know what you think of this episode. Get in the comment section and tell me so I know if uh, I should stop drinking, drinking more, whatever we're doing here. You haven't seen the glass? Just, uh, just send, oh, I can't do it now because we're on the wrong screen. If you haven't seen the glass, then uh, there you go. Let's give you that. Mike, you have, I don't know if you've seen these yet, but they're for sale. They're in the shop. Two for 25. Man, I'm a salesperson. Okay, I'm going to go back to this, though, because I want to show you guys something like up close and personal, right? Like, look how fucking sick this eyeball is. Look at that thing. Look at that detail right here and all the pores. I really took my time. I just wanted it to be badass. The gums and the, the lips right here. Man, that is, it was so fucking awesome. I nailed this thing and I'm proud of it. And I'm not afraid to admit it. 
right? I deserve it, and I've been working hard as fuck to accomplish this exact tattoo right here. And I did it, so I just feel good. And nobody can rob that from me because I earned it. So there we go. Fuck you. <clears throat> Amanda says, you have always been a phenomenal artist since I first met you years ago. Holy F, this portrait is out of this world. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Brody says, I love this episode. Fuck yeah, of course. America, fuck yeah. Brody says, her baby hairs. Yeah, so the hairs, the, the hairs on this were actually... <laughs> It was a lot. Uh, it's a lot more than it looks. And even up here on the top, like all these, these were these were tricky right here. This, that was hard. Little fuzzies. And then all these here. Look at this one. Look up close to this. You guys can. Let me get, let me zoom in. Right? Look at these. Look at these baby hairs. Let me get over here. Look at that. See all those hairs? Look at those hairs. That is stunning if I don't say so myself, which I do say so myself, actually. So there we go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. All right. I'm going to wait for you guys' comments so we get to the next question. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and get out of this YouTube video. I'm watching some dude myself. Okay. So thank you for saying that, though. Uh, the progress of your work and your growth is proof of unstoppable growth. Thank you. I like this. This is, um, this is a good one. So this person says, the value of your knowledge multiplies when you start I'm sorry, when you share it with others, true or false for you and why? So the value of our knowledge multiplies when we share it with others. True or false and why? Um, the, the, our knowledge, yeah, I mean, 100%, it definitely multiplies. I mean, our, we should be getting better. But then again, I think in some aspects, we get worse over time. I think there's an apex moment. I don't think society, I don't think the world in progress looks like this. I don't think it's linear. I don't think that it's even. I don't think it plateaus. I actually think that it's a spiky. If you zoom in close enough, it's a spiky edge. But if you zoom out far enough, what you'll see is a nice progress. And then I think at that point, you're going to see huge dips. Progress dips, so it's going to go jagged edge down. And I think that there is a culmination. There's a point in which there's a the law of diminishing returns kicks in. And I think we're probably, I actually think we're close. I, look, we have a fucking nuclear bomb. Okay, like we have we have things worse than nuclear bombs in a sense. Uh, I don't think we're going up from here. I, I think we've reached, to some degree, the achievements uh, and the pinnacle of human existence. And I think it's time and things are changing. And I'm not going to say it's for the worse. It's just the way it's supposed to be. It's just the way it is, right? Like, I think of it as like music. Like, do you think classical music is ever going to come back and there's going to be better composers? Do you think rock music is going to come back and be better than what it was? Like, 80s rock is over. Hair bands are gone. Hollywood is done. Um, YouTube is new, but it's even itself uh, going to be out the door once somebody replaces it one day, like TikTok. One day TikTok will have its time. You know, cars, burning fuel engines, has, they've had their time. These things have had their time. All things on all scales have their time. And then they stick around, right? People, I listen to classical all the time, but uh, there's nothing new classical that I'm listening to that's definitely not ripoffs or copies or completely directly inspired by. Uh, the old greats, everything has its time, right? And uh, you want to know more about that? Then uh, just pay attention, right? All things have their time, the coming and going of life. So the value of, the question was, the value of our knowledge multiplies when we share it with others, true or false? True and false. Your job as a parent is to pass on what you know so your kids can be more successful than you. And allow them to make mistakes that you didn't make so they can learn things you don't know so they can outperform you. Otherwise, you failed as a parent. If your kids aren't better than you, you have failed. The same could be true, I think, for communities and for countries, but we won't get into that. Okay. <clears throat> Ian says, you leveled up again. Growth is important. It's awesome you share it with us. Thank you for that, and I appreciate it. Because I actually do. I really feel like with this tattoo that I just shared you, it was a true level up. And I'm just letting you, I'm sharing with you guys not to show off as much as I'm sharing it to let you know how it feels. It feels like shit all the fucking time. You're just working, working, working. Mike sees it. Ian sees it. People see it. They come in the shop. They see it. And I'm not saying I'm in a bad mood all the time, although sometimes I am. I'm saying that it's hard. It's difficult. It's frustrating. It's <laughs> That's an understatement, right? If I could really tell you the truth, um, really deep down inside. But it pays off when I get to do things. Some of you just jumped on, so I'm going to show you this. When I get to do things like this, that is a fucking full payoff. That's it right there. Just that. That right there 
Oh, so cool. So rewarding to know I accomplished something I've been wanting to for so long and I'm learning and progressing and then I just got better and better and better. And then I nailed it and knocked out of the park and I'm going to keep going. This ain't it. And that's the coolest part about it. That's what's so seductive about uh, achieving things is one day you're sitting there dreaming of these types of things, being able to do it. And then one day you do it 10, 15 years later with so much fucking work behind you. And you look at it and you go, that's awesome. Let's keep going. That's the fucking best part. Oh, thank you, Lolly. I appreciate that. Uh, Mike says she's almost as good as my Joker. Yeah, well, you know, you can do what you can. Audra, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thanks for sharing, Ian. Reading your comment there. <clears throat> Jennifer says, congratulations. Hell yeah, Christy. Sharing the love. <clears throat> Let's go here. Um, everybody's giving you some love, Ian. That's awesome. <clears throat> Brody J just ser- shared a nice little brain fart. Enjoyed that. I just read it. Okay. Here we go. Why night for only getting tattoo? Question mark. Why night is not only for getting tattooed. If you guys want to come to Why Night Friday, we're starting at five to eight. We're gonna do walk-ins. The girls are gonna be there. I'm gonna be there. We're gonna be just tattooing away. It's supposed to be a good time. We're going to have heaters outside. <clears throat> we're going to have some heaters outside burning propane to keep you warm if it's even fucking cold. We're going to have some nice seating and we're going to relax. We're going to have some drinks and put on some music and just hang out, right? Get tattooed, do small stuff. Everything has to be within an hour or less. And we're going to get to meet as many people as possible. We already have quite a few people going. So if you want to get in on it, you need to show up and show up as early as possible. You have to be present. Uh, we are not going to make appointments and we will not reserve spots for people who do not show up or come in. So it's first come, first serve, and we're going to have some other surprises too. You won't want to miss, and if you do, you will regret it, but I'm not going to tell you what those are. You will have to find out day of. So anyways, wine night isn't just for people getting tattooed. Show up. If you guys want to come, you want to have a glass of wine and hang out, uh, you should do so. The glass of wine is complimentary for people getting tattooed, but if you guys want to pitch in and tip the tender, then uh, we're more than happy to uh, hook you up. All right, we have plenty of glasses uh, Well, for now. They won't be around soon if Danbury keeps buying them. <clears throat> Mike says, you know it. It was a hell of a compliment. Uh, supposed to rain, so it says. Uh, that's awesome. I hope it rains. We have canopies. Rain is awesome. Rain and wine. Who doesn't like that, right? All you need is a fire pit. Okay. <clears throat> so wine night. Yes, there's your answer. This Friday, wine night, 5 to 8. Come see us. Or earlier, whatever. I'll be there all day. <clears throat> this is a good one. I should have thought of this one ahead of time. If you could only give three pointers to help be unstoppable, what are they? If I could only give three pointers to help be unstoppable, what are they? Well, one is paramount. To become unstoppable, you have to suffer. You you fucking have to. Because every time you meet suffering, it's going to halt you. So what you have to do is become best fucking friends with it. Which, by the way, we're already all born with so much of it. It, You're not going to have, you have no lack, okay? You don't have to just go experience it out in the real world. Although that's the right, that's the best way to do it. You already have a plenty of it. You already have. We all have it, right? We've all been abandoned. We've all been hurt. We've all been cheated on, lied to, stolen from. Uh, we've all been done wrong. We've all got short ends of the stick. You know, we all have family issues and family trauma or what, whatever the fuck it is, right? Everybody's got something. So use it. So that's paramount in regards to this question. That if you can only give three pointers to help me help be unstoppable, what are they? Number one. You absolutely have to dig deep down inside and let suffering and pain and anger and rage, discomfort, you have to let it guide you. You have to let it be. See, if you're waiting to go to the gym, for example, till you're inspired, once you feel like it, right? Like, I really feel like going to the gym. Cool, man. Who cares? That's like, it's like, I really feel like being a good husband right now. I really feel like being a good tattoo artist right now. Right on. Do it every day for the next 10 years. Then we'll talk. Otherwise, I don't give a shit, right? It doesn't mean anything. Just do it in the moment. What you ha- and, and so what I'm saying is, if you're only waiting to do things when they feel good, you're not going to do very many good things because you're not going to feel good about them that often. Otherwise, we'd all be going to the gym and be rich and you know, sophisticated, smart, and chiseled jawline, blue eyes, nice beard, tall, dark, and handsome. We'd all be that. Well, we can't all be that because there's not enough room for all of us. Just me. So number one is that. You have to dig deep down inside and use your pain. And if you're not willing to do that because it's too hard, which uh, rightfully so, that's why most people are not successful because they won't fucking do it. Step one, suffer. Suffer and suffer some more. And if you've done that, suffer a little more. 
And once that's the case, now guess what you get to do? You guessed it. So you have to suffer a lot. And you have to, once you get through it all, you have to suffer well. And once you start to suffer well, that's when you start to win. It's not just suffering. Suffering can't just be for, end, for no ends. It has to be for a reason for you to grow and to get better. That's awesome. Well, okay, I get it. Mike, there you go. Damer says I'm after those tumblers now. The tumblers are awesome. They're fucking awesome. Um, Natalie, Natalie is asking, Josh, with this tattoo, did you design or did the customer bring in a picture? So actually with this tattoo, it was a portrait already of a woman. I could show it to you. I think I have it on here. Let's see here. It was a portrait of a woman, but I changed it. So I turned her into a woman with no eyes, which is kind of cool because I did the same thing again today on another client. It was really cool. So I'll show you the original. There we go. Okay, so this is just a picture of a woman. It's, it's pretty much exactly the same photo. The only difference is I took her eyes out because I wanted to look like a zombie because actually uh, you can't see it in this photo, but her heart is ripped out. So that'll be the next session. And she's got blood on her hands and her mouth. And above it is the angel of death holding her heart. But you also can't see that yet. So once this is done, you'll see all of it. So I customized. Where's the photo? One second. So this is actually the photo. Let's get out of here. Wait, I didn't realize we're still in minor screen. So there's the photo that I used uh, for the lady, right? A real person, which is an awesome photo, as a matter of fact. But to be honest with you, I kind of like... So even though it looks really cool, it's a little exposed, overexposed in the screen, but it doesn't look like that in the phone. Um, but I actually like this one better. I think it's more interesting. So I added the blood. I added the ripped out heart. I took her eyes out and made it look custom that way. I don't like to copy things perfectly usually, although I can because I do love doing realism. But I did customize it. So I use a real person. And that's often what I do. Oftentimes what I do is use a real person. Okay, uh, let's go here. <laughs> I hate it, uh, but I do. Um, okay. <clears throat> Ian says he thought I was talking about him until the beard. Yeah, well, you know, not everybody can. <laughs> okay. Appreciate you, Amanda. Mike says, what's up with the Hefner robe? Um, what? If you're talking about me, this is a sweater bought to me by Jenna. Jenna, thanks for sending me the sweater out of town she's a real estate person and sent it to me in uh in a package to my shop and i'm wearing it okay <clears throat> thanks thanks ian stick it out for me uh now he says your tattoo is sexier uh don't know what that means oh then the original then the photo i actually agree i think it is just a little bit sexier she's a little she's a little spicy spicy okay let's get to the next question let's go here let's do this all right, that's what tonight's about, is a Q&A. So if you guys have questions, we're getting towards the end of them, you can ask me here, and we can talk a little bit more about being, uh, a little bit more about being unstoppable, and I would like to get to it, because there is a lot to it, but really, uh, we've talked about, we've really talked about a lot tonight, tonight, and covered a lot of it, and really covered the topic thoroughly, but we can add a little bit uh, extra to it after these questions are done. So if you guys have questions in the comments, you know what to do. Let's rock and roll. <clears throat> You are absolutely right, Dambrew. Okay, so let's get to the next question. Uh, what do you think about tattoos and copyright? Um, example, um, famous artist, won't say her name, lawsuit, question mark. What do you think about tattoos and copyright? I don't know anything about this lawsuit. Thanks for sending that question in. I wish I did no more. I don't follow pop culture too much, to be honest with you. I don't, I'm don't. i not interested in it. I'm not much of a spectator. I don't like to watch. Mm. So I don't know anything about this lawsuit with this famous tattoo artist that you're talking about. Most of you, probably all of you know who this tattoo artist is, but I won't say her name. Uh, what do you think about tattoos and copyright? Um, well, as an artist, I think it's pretty shitty. It's getting fucking warm. That's what I think about copyright. It makes me hot, spicy. Um, oh, it's, this sweater is a little small. You're going to watch me suffer. I'm going to struggle. So what do I think about tattoos and copyright? I think that my sweater is really fuzzy now. What I think about tattoos and copyright, I think it sucks for artists to steal, but at the same time, um, we do it all the time. And what I mean by steal is to make money off of somebody else's image, especially with giving, without giving them credit for it, I think it's pretty pathetic. So for example, this photo that I took, if I knew who really took the actual original photo for me to use as inspiration for the tattoo, although I changed it, so it's not copywritten, 
uh, I would totally give them credit and I love that. So I do wish, unfortunately, the internet things get shared and lost so much that it's hard for us to pay dues where they are due credit where they are due. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's hard for us. So in regards to that, it would be nice if we were a little more honest about the work we do. I didn't realize that sweater was going to completely buzz me out, but we're just going to suffer. I look like I'm full of dog hair. So <clears throat> in terms of copyright, uh, I think if you're an artist, you should be honest with it. Uh, but at the same time, there's something about being an artist that I think is so cool that we get to be rebels and break the rules and we get to bend them and we get to create our own. So there's an, a level of that in regards to tattooing. You know, if I open up a shop or a store, I can't sell like knockoff Disney products or knockoff Nightmare Before Christmas type apparel or anything like that. But if I'm tattooing and I'm using it as inspiration and making up my own or making changes to it, like I have before to a lot of you, even in this stream, that's pretty cool, right? There's not a lot of industries and not a lot of businesses. You can't just go make knockoff shirts. You know, you can't, I mean, unless you want to go to swap me, but how well that's going to work for you. So by altering it and changing it, it voids the copyright, but at the same time, uh, that's always a gray area, right? That's always a gray area with music, with movies. If somebody really wants to pursue something, especially for the big guys, you're, you're not going to beat them. So typically, it's not going to be in your favor. <clears throat> Jennifer says, do you think tattoos should be original or how much altered? No, I don't. I don't think I don't like rules. I really don't. Um, but I do think credit should be given where credit is due. And I think that's appropriate, right? If you're going to steal something from somebody or use something for some inspiration, uh, it's really cool to give credit. So one is that we have to be able to identify who it was made by. And two, I think it's the individual to pay that, you know, forward. I think that's pretty cool. Plus tattooing is not like it's not like you're uploading a photo and then I'm taking that photo and uploading it on my website and saying that's mine. I'm using that photo to be able to put something in the skin in a, in the way I see fit. So it's really, if anything, it should be a compliment, right? Like a lot of people get pissed. A lot of y'all get touched, you get super touched when somebody else copies you or does something you want to do, or when you say something you wanted to do and somebody else ends up doing it first. You're like, Oh, I had the idea. You should be you're such a brat, man. You should be honored. If somebody copies my work, it's an honor. If somebody uses something I made as inspiration, it's a compliment, right? I've seen it done before and I've not, I'm not irritated or angry about it. Matter of fact, one time I was so autopilot, and this is a true story. I was on such autopilot. I was just trying to give this person the kind of tattoo they wanted. They had the exact design. I kept trying to design my own thing and they kept going back to this other design. And I was trying to alter it, trying to do my own thing. And it got to the point to where I just realized this, is, this design is what they want. Well, it was cropped out so much that it just, it wasn't registering in my head. And this is the honest truth. It was not registering in my head that it was a tattoo. It was just an image of a uh, watercolored, like, I don't know, like a drag or something. Really cute little design. I don't remember what it was, like unicorn, dragon, something. And so I just tattooed exactly how it was in the photo because she loved the photo. And it didn't even, like, I didn't even think about it. It was, it was totally autopilot. Uh, the person ended up sharing it. And the artist was local who actually made that piece of art and it was actually a tattoo on somebody else's body locally. So I literally verbatim copied somebody else's work. And when it dawned on me, like, the fuck were you doing, Josh? You don't do that. Like, you always change. You always use it as a You do something new, especially if it's a tattoo. If people bring me pictures of tattoos and say, I want this, I'm like, that's cool. We can use it as inspiration, but I can't copy it. It's somebody else's artwork, man. You can't run into that person and, you know... It's disrespectful. It's just not cool, right? So um, at the same time, it could be a compliment, but uh, the way I did it was just carelessness, and I really learned my lesson because the artist even messaged me online and said, looks familiar. She, she wasn't mad. She just goes, looks familiar, LOL. And I went on her page and looked. And <laughs> I was like, fuck, dude. I totally just verbatim copied this person's tattoo, and it just felt stupid. So you got to learn your lesson, right? I teach all my apprentices not to... Copy, but steal. Take it and make it better. <clears throat> um, Brody says, got sued for using a photograph of a famous person and the photograph for photography or suing her. That's what happens when you become successful. You become a target and people throw shit at you. So that was to my point earlier. It sucks. And I think it's pathetic, but whatever. I mean, when you're rich and famous, people are going to come for you for sure. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see here. Kelly, thanks for being on here. What's up? Natalie says, love the changes you make. I appreciate you. 
Okay. I'm trying to catch up to the comments here. Let's see. Jennifer says, I feel like it could go both ways. <laughs> Jennifer. Jeez. She says, I feel like it could go both ways when someone takes your photo and you have tattoos. Does the tattoo artist get credit? Who owns the right to the tattoo? Hold on. Let me read that. So when someone takes your photo and you have tattoos, does the tattoo artist get credit? Takes your photo and you have tattoos. I don't know what that means. I don't know if I read it wrong. Sorry. I can't decipher that. A person suing probably doesn't care that the tattoo artist used her image, just wants money. That's my whole point. I think that's what it is. But then again, then again, uh, you never know the whole story. Uh, okay, I'm not going to read all that. But let's get to it. Let's get to the last, next questions. I got a few left, not very many. If you guys want to ask them in the comment section, we can do that. Or we can just end this night with a nice little bang. I'll finish the rest of my drink, and we will uh, finish the conversation. Okay, next question. You are an inspiring soul. Next question. Ready? You are an inspiring soul. That's right. Okay, I just had to play some sound effects. Mostly because I actually have to remind you that if you guys didn't know, Linda, Linda, if you're out there, whatever you're doing, wherever you are, I don't care who you're doing it with, just know that you're my favorite. You really are. You're awesome, Linda. She actually found out that uh, the shop had uh, been compromised recently and uh, through a little birdie. And she messaged me to check to see if I was okay. Fuck, Linda, you're so cool. You're just, when I grow up, I want to be like you. Linda's rad. She's my favorite, if you guys didn't know. She actually is. Actually, you know what? Uh, I'm going to find <laughs> I'm gonna find the message. I'm going to read this to you. So you guys know Linda's real. I've already shown you her arm once. Uh, she says, sorry it happened to your shop and your employees. Take good care, Josh. Love you, buddy. And I said, love you my favorite. And she goes, you going to stick to that story of favorite still question mark. And I said forever. And she said, it makes me just feel so special, happy and loved. Linda, you are awesome. And I appreciate you. So I just had to read that to you guys because well, it's just, it's Linda. I mean, come on. She has like her own, she pretty much had her own like episode here. Could just do episodes of just Linda. Okay. Let's see here. So this is the last question. We've gotten to it. That's awesome. And this is probably the best question of the night because it's the simplest, straight to the point, straight to the topic. Natalie, 100%. America, fuck yeah. Let's see what we can get over here. We appreciate that. Because you know we love the flags. We'll get to this last comment. Well, you know we love the flags. I love the flag. If you don't love the flag, I don't really care. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, but if you're going to come at me and tell me I either should or shouldn't fly the flag, uh, I'm just going to laugh at you and think that you probably hang out in your mom's basement too long doing funny things to your pecker with Cheeto steak fingers. And I'm um, just, we're going to laugh at you and we're going to put fun and we're going to bring it up here on the live stream. And um, yeah, you're a loser. And if you don't like the flag, you can piss off, but I love it and you guys love it. So you can send me a bunch right now if you like before we get to the last question. We're just going to do a little episode of this flag. So you guys send that flag. Uh, if you don't want to send the flag, you don't have to, <laughs> but I'm watching you. Okay. Let's see here. <laughs> Mike says commas, people, commas. Mike, go home. You're probably already home. Okay. <clears throat> and Mike, of course. The answer is cool, of course. Mike, thanks for the second flag. You know we love them. Uh, Barkus says, have I told you that I'm proud of you this week? So proud of you, Joshua. Keep up the hard work. You know what, Barkus? When you said, it's so cool, Josh, to see what you're doing, she was in the shop getting tattooed, and uh, she had told me it was really cool to, for her to see my progress. Marcus, same to you. It's really cool. I'm glad you're alive. I, I took your almost death really hard, and I'm glad you're here with us because you're fucking awesome. Okay, so what else do we got? We got any more? Uh, got any flags coming in? Oh, I see them. Let's see which ones. Up, oh, look at them. Look at them coming in. I could do this all night. This would be my favorite episode. Ian, thanks for sending those. You know, I fucking like it. Mike's keeping it spicy as always. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Brody Jade, thank you for that. Uh, before we sign off and get to the last question. You guys should definitely send the flags. Okay, I got 17 people on here. I should see 17 flags. I don't see why not. Did I just pour more? Oh, how that happened. One more time for all of you just jumping on. God, that's good. Look at these bad boys. Look at these bad boys. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to sell you. I don't want you to buy them. I have more at the shop, a ton. I even have wood ones. I have new ones. Uh, thank you, Kevin, for making them. But I'm just showing this off. I mean, come on. 
How do I line that up? How do I make this happen? Can you see this? I mean, geez. This makes a guy want to drink a drink. Good. Let's get those flags up. Christy, thanks for sending it. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Mike says, Barkus is a badass, and you are not wrong. You are absolutely not wrong. Ding, ding, ding. What do we have for her, Johnny? Heidi thinks we're setting that. This is a really good way to end it tonight. I appreciate you guys. We're going to get to the last question. Still send the flags all you want. Fucking love them. And you know. Thank you, Marcus. Marco. Marco. Fucking hell yeah. Okay. Last question. What pushes your drive? There's the question. What pushes your drive? I'm going to let you guys chime in. I hope you guys do this quick because I don't want to wait very long. Got a drink to drink here. What pushes your drive? What pushes your guys' drive? What, what, what drives you guys in this life? What pushes you to keep driven and to keep going? What has helped you in the past when you didn't want to? What has been the thing, the catalyst, the thing that propels you into your future, that propels you into the person you want to be? Uh, Kershaw, thank you so very much. You know we love America, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ian's an MVP. Kircher's. Well, there he goes. He's sh sharing some love. There we go. I don't have a button for that. You can't handle the truth. But I do have a button for that. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah. Okay, so Christy says when things get hard. <laughs> Christy, keep that to yourself. Barkus says family, so that's the thing that keeps her driven. What keeps you driven? I want to know. I'm going to answer it. I got, I got the question up. What pushes your drive? I want to let, I'll let you know what keeps me driven. Um, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to be real honest. I'm going to be as honest as I can. I've had a couple of wobbly pops and some truth serum, so I'm going to do my best, and I'm going to let you guys know what pushes me, truthfully. It's a really simple answer. So I want to hear what you guys have to say. So Mike says, Dabria keeps him fired up. These nuts. <laughs> Got it. Thanks for that, Mike. Got That's what he. she said. So let me know. What pushes you guys? Natalie says, wanting to learn new things pushes me. So the desire to learn pushes you, Natalie? Is that what you're saying? Is it because you're curious and excited and it's new? Or are you saying that uh, you feel like you're not enough or you feel like you haven't experienced or known and come to learn enough so you want to experience that are you trying to go down is there is there a means to that end or is it just you're excited to learn or you feel like you need to learn because of some sort of maybe you're not um, quite where you'd like to be or both i don't know uh heidi says your soul you cannot stop stay the course i dig that i dig that christy grow up jesus uh no don't grow up keep buying my shirts christy i don't know if you know this but I'm just going to keep this. I'm just going to keep it. I'm actually going to shellack it and so I can keep it behind the bar. <clears throat> uh, Danbury says, my soul pushes me when I wake up each morning and breathe. I thank God and appreciate I'm living and decided to live it the best I can. And you know what? Good job and praise you because that's all you have to do. That's it. Just do your best every day. Get a little better, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. You don't always have to go so extreme. Get rid of your couch. Get rid of your friends. Get rid of your cell phone. Get rid of your fridge. Um, you can just go. Mild and over long periods of time, it turns wild. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Lenore, we are getting spicy. You know we're getting spicy, and you know that we like it spicy. That's why I managed to stay single this whole time, you know? Okay. Natalie says, I feel knowledge is power. Well, I hate to burst your bubble, but knowledge, I don't believe, is power. But but I don't, I, I don't think you're exactly wrong. I just, I don't like that. I hate that quote. I hate a lot of quotes. I hate a lot of things. I hate a ton of things. I don't believe knowledge is power. I think knowledge is information. And that's all I think it is. Knowledge is information until applied and action is power. Uh, who are you if, unless we actually put things into place, into action, right? What do you take action on? That's what matters. You can have all the knowledge in the world. Don't mean shit until you do something about it. And there's plenty of those guys, man, those real smart motherfuckers out there with all the fancy words. And uh, man, they're just... They're, they're intolerable, to be honest with you. It's like, dude, you haven't done shit. You've never been anywhere. You've never done anything. You have no original ideas, just a bunch of information. Natalie, I'm not saying that's you. I'm just saying, I think knowledge isn't power. I think knowledge is a catalyst, right? I think that it's like fuel. 
fuel, I don't think, is the power. It's the fuel exploding inside the engine. The engine is the thing doing, you know, getting it done. And um, it's the thing that wears out. You can't keep replenishing. Eventually, it has its finite time. So I just think knowledge is information, and information is useless without action. And taking action is actually everything. So I always like to compare it to a football player or a pianist. A pianist, calm down, girls. I know it's late. I know I get it. Uh, but a pianist, right? Someone who plays piano, okay? Not to be confused with pianist. Actually, that's the right way to say it. So anyways, um, <clears throat> hitting the D chord. So <laughs> dun, 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 tss, do I even have that? I don't even know if I have that, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like a beat. I'm going off the deep end. It's getting late. Okay, I don't even remember where I was. Knowledge is power. Uh, knowledge is nothing until applied, and application is everything. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Jennifer says, to get better, smarter, stronger when doing something, remember, make it wow or why bother? I like to keep leveling up how far I can take it and go. So you're kind of saying like the the excitement of seeing personal growth. Because I agree, it's, it's like lights a fire under you. To do something and be better at it incrementally over time, is to know that today I can't do something. There's something I want to do and I cannot do it. I know I can't do it. And I have to lie to myself in some form or fashion long enough until I believe it so that I can take action to do it. And when I do, I fail. And then I fail again. And I keep failing until eventually I get a little better because I've tried so many times. I've tried a lot of things that don't work. I've gotten a lot of feedback in a physical world. And now I'm starting to get better. And those little incremental better wins, those little tiny changes lead up to eventually monumental changes. <sighs> and it takes. It's okay. I don't mind. I embrace it and I'm going to keep going. And on another 20 years, I'll look back and say, guys, it's been 20 years. I leveled up again. I don't care if it takes 100 or a million years. I'm going to keep leveling up. I don't care if it's one page at a time, one word at a time, one idea at a time. It feels really fucking good to know that today I'm not something that I'd like to be, but tomorrow I can be closer to it if I just take action. And in years from now, I can look back and I am unrecognizable. That is addictive. Because then your whole life opens up to like almost just being a big trick or a lie or an illusion, right? So it's pretty badass that you get free. That If you really want to see the code in the matrix, well, listen to what I just said. Rewind the last 30 seconds. Okay, Amanda says, God, family, and appreciation for another day. That's awesome. Congratulations. Uh, Mike says, the fact that you're alive is amazing fact. You were the winning sperm out of millions. You're alive. You're one in a billion, trillion, zillion. It is pretty fucking amazing. It is pretty fucking amazing. It's a miracle. Um, Brody saying, being someone my loved ones can count on uh, to and be honored, they have the faith and trust in me that I can help or make it better. Okay, so that's that's awesome. That That's a good way. It's too small on the comments to think to be able to be re read, but that's okay. Um, that's a good thing to have in your corner. That's awesome. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> there's the screenshot of the night. Ian says, you hate a ton of things, but you love whiskey in America. You know what? Before uh, this disappears, I'm going to go ahead and uh, shift four. We're going to screenshot that, and I'm going to keep that, and we're going to archive that, and we're going to put it right here. Okay, so let's see here. Um, dun, 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 dun. Okay, thanks for bearing with me. So what I did was, uh, I'm keeping that. I'm keeping that, Ian. Oh man, it has like a. Is that is that active? Hold on, let me see what that is. What is that? What's going on? It shouldn't be there. Oh, it's not there. Okay, so I'm keeping that forever. What is this? What 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 the what shit's name? That's really weird. I don't know what that is. Okay, so anyways, I'm keeping that forever. Ian, thank you. I'm just going to show off my tattoo for another minute for you newbies coming on here wondering, what is this guy talking about? Is he even legit? Is he qualified? Does he know what he's saying? Okay, am I believable? I don't fucking know. But you are right, Ian. Uh, I hate a lot of things. Mike, thanks for the flags. You know what to do. Oh, no, God! America, fuck yeah! LOL. I can't be cut off of my own bottle in my own studio on my own show. You're silly. You're cut off, Christy. You hear that? You're cut off. Oh, you hear this? Nice little slate coaster. Whew. Sexy. <clears throat> okay, let's keep going here. I'm going to try to catch up with you guys. We got to 
the last question, and I didn't answer it. You guys did, but I'm going to give you mine. And he says, eh, it's getting spicy. You are not wrong, and I'm glad you're here with us, so I appreciate you. Christy, uh, I don't know what those mean. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what these little guys mean right here, but it's a little weird. <clears throat> okay, Christy, selfie me and Josh. What the heck? Hey, Christy, that's a selfie of me and Josh. Mike, get a life, dude. Don't you have, like, cooking to do in your apron or something? Uh, Ian says, consistency is power even when you don't want to do it anyways. Being consistent creates accomplishments. Yeah, without consistency, you are fucking nothing. You hear me? You are nothing. I'm just kidding. But seriously, without consistency, you're fucking nothing. Mike, thanks for the flags. Yeah. Oh, I'm super behind. I got a lot of... I am super behind. Um... Lenore says, I don't know how to say it. Love making people laugh and smile. Love to travel with my girls. So I need to do better. So I need to do better. Interesting. She loves making people laugh and smile. Lenore, you make me laugh and you make me smile. Smile? Smile. You make me smile when uh, you send me food, food pictures because I fucking love food. Even just even if I'm just looking at it. Dambria, calm down. You ladies, what is the deal? Maybe we should play a little bit of this so that uh, shouldn't entertain this, but at the same time, we just got to Fuck yeah. So night, keeping it spicy. Okay, so the last question was, what pushes your drive? You guys gave me some answers. I'm going to tell you mine. What keeps me driven? I'm going to reword it. So what pushes your drive? What keeps me driven? I'm driven by alcohol and anger. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I told you I'd be honest. I'm going to be honest with you guys for a few minutes. 18 of you are on here. One of you has loved this story. 15 of you have thumbs up, uh, but uh, we need more thumbs up. Send a thumbs up. Like the stream. By the way, I got a super chat a little while back. I, let me see where this went. Uh, I saw some colors pop up, but I didn't uh, address it, and I apologize. Here we go. Uh, Ian, thank you so much, so very much for that super chat. I appreciate it, and thanks for the flags. You know I love them. You know I love getting paid in the super chat at the bottom when you go to it and hit money and just send it my way. Uh, it's actually really, really cool, and it makes me feel really happy to send the flags, especially you, Lenore. Look at this. Look at these flags. Can you believe it? Okay. Anyway, super chats are awesome. It, uh, it's, it keeps me driven, Ian. It's actually really cool. It really is, because it shows me that you guys care. And that uh, spending this time with you is worth something, not just your attention. Although your attention is worth more than your money. Um, either way, I just really, really appreciate it. And I appreciate get, appreciate you guys. So I'm going to get real with you. You guys can get in the comment sections if you have any more questions. You want to end this with me on a positive note. Uh, it's not going to happen. We're going to go on a negative note because the question is what pushes your drive. So what keeps me driven is negativity. Pain and suffering, fear, uh, fear of going broke, fear of not being good enough. The truth. I'm going to give you guys some real truth because I want you to hear this because too many people want to sugarcoat it and be like, oh, it's all rainbows and fucking sunshine and chakras, dude. Here's what I want to say. What pushes my, what gets me driven is the little boy inside me still that uh, remembers sleeping on the ground in a tent, homeless with no food, no shelter, no warmth, no comfort. Nobody to tell me I'm good, great, loved, cared for. And I'm not completely shitting on my childhood or the people who raised me and the people I lived with time to time here and there, different, different family members, my parents, sometimes uh, other people as well. Um, but I remember the kid that had no comforts, that was sleeping on the ground in the cold with no clean clothes, that went to school, that was a dork, that went to bed till he was 13, that was malnutritioned and sick all the time and not smart and a little dyslexic. So I couldn't even remember a word the teacher said, couldn't read anything. Uh, I remember saying Arkansas Ar wrong one time because she... Um, asked a teacher asked me a question in front of the class, and she knew I didn't know it because we had talked about it previously. And uh, just to make fun of me, I had a teacher one time flick my ears in uh, some Vietnam flash flashback shit. I had a teacher flick my ears one time when I was, I think, I think it was in fourth fifth grade. Um, I, I I've been accused of lots of things I never did just because people like to pick on me. One time, this guy Jeremiah drew a picture, and it was of a kid in a burning building, and the teacher asked me who drew it. And I thought she wanted to know because it was a really good picture because it was drawn really well with lots of detail. And I didn't know. And so I said it was me because I wanted the credit because I thought maybe he was the kid, you know, maybe I was going to get a reward. And like, oh, my God, this kid's so good and artistic. And I identify as being artistic. So I said it was me and it ended up being, I guess, some sort of racist joke towards like a Hindu kid that, or Indian kid that was in my class. I didn't know that. And so I got in trouble for something I didn't do. And so I just remember all those days standing out in the sun, hiding from my classroom on the back of the bleachers 
facing a hot sun, summer sun so I can uh, dry my pants after, you know, urinating in them because I couldn't control my bladder until I was literally 13. Um, always having issues health-wise. Uh, being a, the dorky kid, I can't tell you how many times I jumped in puddles just to be able to go home. Uh, how many times I faked falling in the mud so that you couldn't see the stains on my pants. Um, I, I, I'm, going, I'm, I'm taking you as dark and deep as I can. Uh, Dad not showing up when he said he would, waiting on the front porch steps for hours. I'm actually glad my sister's not on here. I hope she's not. Um, you know, sitting there and suffering, right? Uh, seeing abuse, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual even, in a way. Um, you know, had a father that was super evangelical, but the biggest hypocrite, hypocrite and I mean my biological, not my actual father, David, who's uh, pretty much my savior, came into my life at 10. Uh, but I remember all these things. I remember my mom being, being abused, my sisters being taken advantage of. Uh, I remember being poor and having nothing, being laughed at, not knowing why, going through a checkout stand and people would look at me as a little kid because I was a little, <laughs> I was a little funky looking. I had a big old head. I got stuck in the birth canal, okay? So it allowed my brain to get so big. That's why I'm here tonight. My point is, people would look at me and say, uh, is he okay? My mom would say, yes, he's fine. And they'd go, is he special? And I was all excited. I'm like, yeah, I'm special. And I grew up to realize they thought I was retarded. And they actually put me in the special ed classes. I know. Can you believe it? Can you imagine? Me. No friends, dorky, smells like piss, in class with no friends, and uh, super hungry all the time, no food for, no food for lunch money. Um, and then somewhere around 15, 16, discovered that I could draw. I mean, I already knew it, but I, ne I didn't know how good. And uh, people started paying me money for it. And so I had lunch money all of a sudden. So I started tattooing people with markers, <laughs> meaning I would draw on their arms and they would pay me a dollar. And now I could get a Frosty. We had Wendy's Frosties for some reason at our, uh, at our high school. And then uh, Taco Bell tacos for like 75 cents. And I found a way. I found a way. I found a way to figure it out. Um, and so that's what drives me. Because I'm not the only one who's experienced this. I'm not the only one out there. It's not about me. It's not about my story. Uh, what I'm thinking is there's a kid out there in the same position. You know, think, think about your guys' life. There's somebody out there just like that. Okay? It's not just you. Take you could take it as nuanced as you want and think that oh nobody's ever broke 117 bones in their body and almost died nobody's ever uh, been hurt as a kid by someone they loved or nobody's ever been poor didn't know what it was yeah you're not the only one and neither am I and my point is what drives me is there's another little kid out there and I imagine he's in the same position as all of us have been right I've heard a lot of your guys' stories right I'm very close to you I'm your tattoo artist AKA therapist and so all I'm trying to do is in my little corner of the world, find out how I can give back and create the things that I know at those times and even, you know, pre, you know, times later, much later than that, even growing up, creating things I wish I had at those times. When I wanted to become a tattoo artist, there's no way to learn. Nobody would help you and everybody was rude and it was a bunch, it was a, it was a criminal underground sort of industry and it still very much is. So I create something I wish I had. So these young kids coming up in the industry don't have to be taken advantage of. These young girls who get into the industry and get taken advantage of, they want to get the red button pierced. And the dude says you have to take your shirt off, which is obviously not necessary. Um, I just want to create something I wish I had. I think it's really cool that I can do that. And the coolest part is I know that we all have an opportunity to do that. So it's like trifold. So the, so the question is what pushes you? What pushes me is the pain and the suffering buried deep down inside of all of us. You know, And I can only take it personal because that's my experience. And I can create the things that can alleviate that in others best I can. It's not completely, but best I can. And I can create things I wish I had that would have helped me along the way, right? Someone to look at you and see your talents as an artist, which is very rare to do because most people don't see the value in art until that person's great. You know, they just think, oh, he never sticks with anything. Uh, my daughter just, she'll never stick with anything. She just can't hold a job. She can't do, maybe she's a fucking creative wizard, right? And you just keep putting her in logistical scenarios where she's not shining. <clears throat> So what pushes me is thinking of the suffering and the undue suffering other kids are going through and people and young people, even you guys watching, all of us have done this together. All of us have helped each other in some way. And I'm just trying to build things, make things and create things, whether it's my shop, my studio, the classes, the courses, this live stream, friendships with a lot of you that I've talked to endlessly. <clears throat> I'm just trying to create things and spaces and places, not safe places, not necessarily. If you guys know me, I, I say quite harsh things because I want to be honest with you. You know, when I was a kid, I wasn't smart. I wasn't handsome. I wasn't, I know, it's, I know it's really hard to imagine. I didn't have these dazzling blue eyes and a strong jawline and this quick wit. Um, I didn't have a lot of things going for me. But the few things that I did have going for me, and now that I'm an adult, I can look back and I can see and I can go, dude, nobody, 
fuck, if someone just could look at you and say, check this out though. Look what you look at, but maybe like, Hey, this thing, this thing's special. Just that alone can be monumental, right? At one teacher in uh, grade school, Miss Chester, she changed her name because she got married. I was fucking heartbroken. Redhead. And I would always make it a point to walk by her because she was the only person in my school that I can ever remember being nice to me. She was the yard duty in Maramani. And I'd walk past her and she would say, hey, Mr. Farmer, when are you going to let me borrow those blue eyes? And I'd kind of shy and it, it really embarrassed me and it made me super shy. It was, I know, hard to imagine, Josh Farmer. And, um, and I would tell her, when I get to borrow your freckles, because she was a redhead with tons of freckles, I'd know, I didn't know what else. I wasn't a ladies' man then, if you can't imagine. And my point is that, uh, you know, that person, that one person who went out of their way to make me feel special uh, mattered. You know, the people in my life, like my sisters, like my mother, like mentors that I've had, a, 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 you know, growing up, Brian, who was my Bible study um, person growing up and the churches that I went to, the, the mentors that I had, the people that took me out of class because they could see something that was wrong with me very clearly, which I thought, oh, how do they know? How do they know I'm poor? How do they know I'm an idiot? <laughs> <laughs> I think as an adult, I can look back and go, well, I think it was pretty obvious. Like people couldn't stand being around you. Um, and I was annoying and I was a class clown. If you guys didn't know. So all my point is, is I'm just trying to make things that I wish I had. And if I can do that, if I could become, it's like the reason I always wanted to be rich, the reason I wanted to be 40 and in shape, the reason I wanted to have a good community and you guys, the reason I want to have a live stream, the reason I want to do rad shit, which this to me is rad is because if I can go from being that fucking idiot to this idiot, <laughs> which is a huge jump, to go into the guy who has no fucking idea what he's doing, asking tattoo artists what to do. They say go to jail or go to prison or move to California to learn. And I, so I did. I went to California and thought if it didn't work, I'd move, go to, end up in prison. So I'd learn to eventually this. Like, sure, this might not be the best in the world. And maybe if there's a great artist watching this, they're thinking, oh, that's good, but it like, could be better. Sure. But you know what? It's light years better than where I fucking started. So if I can just build things to help people do that, then we win. We all win, and that's it. That's literally it. So I appreciate you guys. I hope you know that. I hope, I hope you guys know how important this is to me. So I'm, I'm glad you're with me and you're listening to me share what it is that pushes me. It's not just anger and whiskey and cigars, but uh, although oftentimes it is like that. Um, you know, you guys do you, and you do it your way. But just don't forget about the kids that went through the shit you went through and how you could figure out how to give it back, whether it's with your own children, your nieces, your nephews, your community. Cause It doesn't matter who it is. It could be people older than you, right? Mike's on here. Taught him everything he knows, right? Mike's like 100. He still comes in to learn shit from me. So all I'm saying is create things. If you, if you live a life of service, if you, if you learn how to do that, you'll never go wrong. doesn't matter if you're poor doesn't matter if you're cool, smart, fat, smell like piss, no lunch money. It doesn't matter. If you create things that matter to other people that help them along the way, you win. We all win. And so uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, tonight was a good night. It's already almost two hours. You guys know I appreciate you and I appreciate these episodes. Uh, this was about how to become unstoppable and I shared it with you. I shared it with you best I could. I hope it was clear. If it is, let me know in the comment section. If you got anything out of this and you guys want to show me some love, it's easy to do. Just join me, right? I'm not asking you always to buy my stuff and to go buy a shirt and a hat and a coaster and a cup and come to wine night and come to paint night, although that's really cool because it's on the 2nd of this month. It's on this Friday. Or you can come on the 10th. You can come to paint night. I'm not asking you to do all that. I'm asking you to go to a super chat and send it or maybe just mail me money or buy my shirts for $100. Christy. <clears throat> uh, I'm not asking you to do all that, although it's awesome. I really just enjoy you guys being here. So that's it. That's really all I have to say. I appreciate you guys. Um, I hope you got something out of this. I enjoyed having you here. And it's been great. It's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun. And I appreciate you guys. I will see you next time. Let's get some music on the way out here. If I can find something. Let's see here. Let's get our little exit. And you guys know it. You guys know what to do. This show gets spicy. It gets awesome. And uh, I appreciate you. I, I appreciate you guys uh, a ton. I hope you have a good night. I hope you got something out of this. I'll see you next time. Episode 88, Josh Ray Farm, Artistic Freedom, Clovis, California. It's your boy. We out. Much love. We're going to go out with a comment. You guys leave comments. I'm going to go to the black screen. We're going to fade to black here, and you guys are going to leave comments. I'm going to bring them up on the screen, and we're going to see you next time. Peace out. Much love. Later.